my friends. A few weeks ago, back in New York, I decided that I was going to practice for 40 hours a day. No, I'm just kidding, practicing for 12. I would like to walk you through those 12 hours because I think it's an interesting peek into my musical life when it isn't polished and done in a final product that you consume. I sometimes find myself feeling like I'm I'm getting stagnant or falling behind. You will see me both struggle and succeed. And we will talk about the three huge golden lessons that I learned from that day. I don't know, I'm, I'm doing what I want to be doing right now. So like, why am I nervous about it? Before we jump into it, may I present to you... Melinda's tricks for practicing effectively, so that you may watch me not use them. Set realistic goals every time you practice. Focus on drilling the hard spots as opposed to doing full playthroughs of a piece. If you do more playthroughs and less drilling, you're actually going to reinforce your mistakes at the difficult spots, and it will make you very afraid of those spots every time you do a playthrough, and it will just be harder and harder to get over later. Writing. I find it very helpful to connect the physical act of writing a note with the correction that I want to make. Use a metronome. I don't do that enough, but it's good. Don't practice for too long without taking a break. So it is currently 10.30. I am going to practice until 10.30 tonight. Okay, so let's talk about my relationship actually to both piano and guitar, because these are the instruments on which I am predominantly self-taught. I took piano lessons when I was a little, little kid, but stopped very early and then had to relearn when I was an adult. And the way I learned was through learning pieces. So you'll see that my warm-up is actually me playing through pieces that I know and love. But then my actual practice session, like the things I need to work on, would normally be the things that anybody who is more trained in piano would warm up with because that's what they're taught first. For example, I have a lot of trouble playing scales on both hands, knowing all of the inversions of different chords, and playing through the one, four, five chords on different inversions consistently every time. This gives me a really strange relationship to the instruments on which I am self-taught. I feel like I learned them backwards, and it makes my ability to learn things on them incredibly slow. We're only a half hour in. I'm so tired. I don't have the tools to understand how my hands work on those instruments just yet. It's like I've learned a whole lot of key vocabulary in a language, but stringing together a sentence with the proper structure is still very hard for me. So yeah, basically drilling new patterns and hand positions on these instruments is very slow going. It's very time consuming and kind of frustrating. It is so frustrating. God, why? Why? There's a new guitar piece that I really want to learn. Let's do it! This is really hard. I'm gonna die. Oh no. And here we come to big revelation number one of the day. Honestly, maybe the most important and like revolutionary one for me. When people talk about practicing, they often say, I'm working on my craft. It's always my craft. And the craft of whatever it is that you're working on, I find that through my education, it was very much presented to me as something that was outside of me that I needed to strive for based on the standards that were set by the people who came before me. And yeah, that's a very real thing and a very, very valuable thing. But there's another side of it too. For me, I know my purpose in life is to tell stories. And my practicing is literally a way of me getting better at my purpose in life. That's very different from an idea that is external because it turns it into something that only I in my body and mind can accomplish. Hi, I'm doing it! Yay! When you practice anything, you are literally getting better at being and doing you. That's such a, ooh, that's such a like heartwarming, great thing. <laughs> And internalizing that on that day, plus just the, like, brain fog of practicing for that long, made a huge rush of endorphins show up. I'm very tired, but I'm very happy right now. I'm just like a happy little camper. It feels good to push myself 
in this way specifically again. Let's get some food. We're back from lunch and we're gonna do some Irish flute. Aha, so Irish flute. That is the instrument that I left piano for. Sorry, piano. And it is the instrument that I practiced and played the most growing up. So I feel like I am proficient in the language of Irish flute. Not fluent, but proficient. I can improvise on it, I have a personality when I play it, but on a technical level, I make a lot of mistakes these days. My playing isn't as clean or as fast as it used to be, so I'm trying to get back to that. My vibrato is not as good anymore. The main thing that still motivates me to play the Irish flute is just my connection to Irish music and the culture. It's kind of like my soul instrument. I was drawn to it at a really, really young age, and I kind of know that it's it's always there for me if I just want to go back and play it. But it is really nice in a practice setting to be able to sit down and try to get better at it rather than just maintain it. Disclosure. <laughs> I just took another 15 minutes because Damn. My body feels very tired right now. So this was the next thing that I internalized that day And it is that practice is not just sitting down and drilling with your instrument learning also involves that time that you take a break, that time that you spend with a friend talking about the work you've done, that time you spend walking from one building to another during college and seeing people along the way. Which is why I have so much respect and sympathy for anybody who is in conservatory right now. As you can see, I got tired faster by being in one room but trying to do the same routine that I would normally do in a more social situation. So it made me realize just how important the social aspect of creativity is. Enough of this using your hands to play instruments malarkey. Let's sing. Oh god, my relationship to my voice. <laughs> it's the longest relationship I've had to any instrument, and it is complicated. My voice is my best friend in the world, which means that we will not always get along at every point in our existence. I've always naturally had a quieter voice, and I only discovered a sense of power when I was in my like late teens. But while I've never gotten hurt, that power has always felt like it's come from kind of a tense, almost a little bit shouty place for me. So more recently, I've learned to mix, and now I am attempting to incorporate a mix belt. With the very intense work on my voice that I've done this past year, I don't re recognize it <laughs> particularly. Um, that's an emotional thing to say, but it's true. But in a good way, like, it's a good thing. I am excited about the fact that I can do all kinds of things that I definitely couldn't do even a year ago. <laughs> Right? Yeah, but also like everything else that was once comfortable is now like I have to sort of be like and Just like resettle into it, but I'm excited about it because I think I am on the brink of finally Feeling that confidence in my voice and I've been doing a lot of work with my amazing voice teacher Carrie over zoom All the million hours hmm. all, all the million hours There we go, good. But right now I'm still in the like try and fail and get back up again phase, which is a good place to be. If there's any piece of advice I have for singers, it's get a voice teacher. Just, just saying. The final big golden revelation that I had about myself while making this video was the fact that I really did not want to release this video. Because by the end of the day, I realized that I had just filmed myself struggling at the things that I am supposed to be good at for 12 hours. I feel like because I gained a following at 19, back when I, I really didn't know how to do a lot of things musically and in my performance life, I felt like I have learned on the job in just so many ways. And that feeling of like having to play catch up in order to do something, has just given me a really strong sense of imposter syndrome that is, ooh, it is bad. And filming that struggle played into that insecurity wildly. But the reality is, all of your favorite singers and musicians and artists and freaking anybody, we're all still learning. We all go through these different phases of relationships with our instruments that can be incredibly complicated internally and even like emotionally torturous, but we're still expected to like kill it in front of an audience. I am going through that right now. I'm really glad I'm like telling you about it, I guess. It kind of just makes it like, this is me. 
I don't know. It always makes me feel a little bit less alone to see somebody be really curious about how they can improve, even if it's difficult, no matter where they are in life. So, if you are struggling with practicing whatever it is that you want to get good at right now, same. <laughs> That's getting easier. That's getting easier. And more sounding like I'm playing piano rather than being like <laughs> notes. I am losing my mind. Oh my god, why? And I'm gonna do ear training for the rest of the night. officially 10.30 and I can stop. I am exhausted. When my head hits the pillow tonight, I will have done well. I made it. If after that you would like to listen to a final product, you can listen to How Dare You. I'll put it here and down below. And be sure you are subscribed for more from me. And if you want to join my live stream shows and see some practicing and engage with an amazing Discord community, then you can join my Patreon family. Thank you all so much for watching. Follow me on all the social medias. Go practice. I will see you soon. Bye. Mwah.